take you on a gospel adventure into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. Praying in the spirit. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 18 and 19. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always with all prayer. So all prayer must be prayed in the spirit. All prayers. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So all prayers and all supplications ought to be prayed in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Next verse. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So all prayers ought to be prayed in the spirit. And in the course of this teaching, we will help you understand what it means to pray in the spirit. Now, you must be able to realize that when I began to teach you on how to interpret scriptures, I gave you certain rules of Bible interpretation. And I still do that in the course of all teachings because the intent is to eventually equip you to be able to interpret the Bible and interpret the scriptures so that people around you and yourself can be edified one of the rules of bible teaching is that first of all you must read through the bible you read through the bible that's one of the rules you read through the bible and then number two you must observe observation is a vital key in bible study you must observe take note of you know words like if words like and words like but Take note of tenses. Tenses like delivered, blessed, all right, justified, sanctified. They are all in the past. Take note of such adjectives in Bible study. They are not put there for decoration. They are put there to help you come to a place of understanding. Then we also said it is after you have read through and observed that you can be able to interpret, interpret the scriptures. The word diharmonia, to expound or to interpret the scripture. You know, taking your pattern from Jesus. Bible tells us when Jesus rose from the dead on the way to Emmaus, he met certain disciples of his who were discussing the event of the past three days. And he said to them, gentlemen, what are you guys talking about? And they said to Jesus, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not heard about the events of the past three days? They were preaching Jesus to Jesus because they didn't know Jesus. You can be in church all your life, but you have never known Christ and you have never met Christ. All right, and Jesus turned to them and, and he said to them, Oh fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets, the prophets, Old Testament prophets, have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Verse 27 says, And beginning at Moses... And all the prophets, he expounded. The word expounded is the word diharmonia. It means interpreted. So Jesus had to interpret Moses and interpret all the prophets. Meaning Moses and all the prophets did not speak in literal terms. Meaning they used a mode of communication that was not literal. Hence the need for diharmonia, interpret. So we interpret scriptures and interpreting scriptures, we interpret scriptures observing the rule of contextual interpretation. What do I mean by contextual interpretation? We're talking about the rule of interpreting context, which will be pretext, post-text, to be able to understand context. Pretext will do with the verses before the verse, post-text will do with the verses after the verse. So scriptures must be interpreted within its surrounding verses you don't cherry pick scriptures because scriptures are not for memorization they are for explanation explanation not for memorization they are not for quoting they are for explanation so we explain scriptures contextually it is called exegesis when a preacher just use scriptures to back up an ideology he is being immoral that's immorality because he is lying against the scriptures. You don't use the scriptures to back your ideology because the scriptures have its own mind. 
So in Bible teaching, we do not innovate, we excavate like miners. You go in to bring out what is there. Miners don't produce the mineral, they bring out the mineral. In Bible study, we go into the scriptures, into the mind of the author to arrive at the thought that the author seeks to communicate. It is at that instance that we can say that you have an understanding of the context. Somebody said to me, Dr. Damina, what book did you write on how to interpret the Bible? I said to him, every book I have written and every message I have preached is Bible study and Bible interpretation. Because that's all we do here. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 3. Listen to brother Paul. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. As I wrote before in few words. Why did he write it? This is a key issue in understanding the mind of God. Understanding the mind of God. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He first says, I wrote it. Then he says, it is written so that it can be read. It is written so that it can be read. So first of all, read the Bible. You are studying a text of any later. If you want to read Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Read from Philippians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, then chapter 4. Because the entire book is one later. It does not have chapter and verses when the author wrote it. Chapters and verses were introduced by people who published. That is why sometimes you will see a verse communicating a thought. The thought does not finish. It continues in another verse. And sometimes the thought doesn't finish in a chapter, continues in another chapter. Because it's one later. Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of Ephesians. The whole six chapters is one later. So don't read it and break. Read all so you have an understanding of what the author was writing. If you just cherry pick, you will never arrive at an understanding. And if you never understand the scriptures, you can't be established. You become a victim, you know, and you'll be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. So you must read the entire letter. All right? Brother Paul says, so that when you read, you may understand my knowledge. The word read is used 32 times. 32 times. That's the frequency in which he says something. When you read is the Greek word anaginosko. Anaginosko. A N A G I. N O S K O, anaginosko. When you read, the word ana means again. Ginosko means to recognize. When you read again and again and again, in the process of reading again and again, you will begin to recognize. All right? Anaginosko. Please pay attention. So imagine if you have the word again. It just means you keep reading and reading. So when Paul says, whereby when you read, you may understand. It's like in today's language, if I'm going to say what Paul said, it will be if you keep reading, you may understand. Whereby when you read, if you keep reading, anaginosko. So you have a duty in Bible study. The first rule is observation. You must read it well. Repeat it again. And what you have not read well, you cannot interpret. In order for you to interpret what you read, you must read well. Sometimes you have some scriptures in your mind you assume you know. An assumption can be a barrier to Bible interpretation. Don't assume to know any scripture till you read. Discard that assumption and just put it aside. Read. Even if you think you know it. Think that you don't know it and read. Read with the mind of a man who don't know it. That's when the scriptures come alive. Sometimes you have to also remember that that approach will be humility to the word of God and it will help you to understand. The word anaginosko is used to relieve an experience. When you relieve an experience, 
It's like I give you a piece of literature to read. And when you are done reading, I ask you to tell me what you read. If you're able to narrate everything you read, it means you read observing Anna Ginosko. It means you read with an intent to understand, to be able to relieve what you read. You're not just reading. You are reading with the intent of understanding. You are reading with an intent to be able to communicate the same. Please pay attention. You know, it's like you watch a movie again and again. After a while, you start recognizing certain things in the movie. After a while, you start understanding why certain moves happen in the movie. Because of continuous watching. And same thing with the Bible. You have to read again and again. And never assume that you know until you know. So we have a duty not to have read the scriptures. Not to have read the scriptures. But to be reading the scriptures. We have a duty not to have read the scriptures, but to be reading the scriptures. Understanding revelation is related to how dutiful and how diligent we are in reading. Reading is key, whereby when you read, you may understand. Look at the kind of questions Jesus asked people in his day. You know, anaginosko. Questions like Matthew 12 verse 3. But he said unto them, have you not read what David did when he was an hungered and they that were with him? Have you not read? Jesus used it many times. Let's examine a few of them. Because that word, have you not read, is anaginosko. Have you not read again and again to the point of recognizing certain things? Why are you asking me like one who has not read? Because if you have read, you shouldn't be asking me this. That's why when they ask him, his response will be, have you not read? Because you're asking like one who has not read. Have you not read? And Jesus asks a number of that with his disciples. Have you not read means, didn't you read properly? Didn't you read properly? In Matthew 12 verse 5, he asked again, have you not read in the law? How that on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Have you not read? He asks again. You can use, have you not read properly in the law? So he points that to them. In Matthew 19 verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female? He is saying, address your mind. He is saying, you are asking this question because you have not addressed your mind properly to the facts. Address your mind properly to the facts in the context. Otherwise, you will be asking like one who has not read. It means to relive the moment or to see it again. All right, If it is in today's English, I will say, go and read it again. Go and read it again. So, there's a properliness in reading. You address your mind to the issues. In Bible study, if many of us read our school books and our career, the way we read the Bible, we will have not only failed. Failure will be better than what we will have been. The way we read the Bible, if that's how you read your school books, you will not only fail. That is failure will be better than what you will be. Because the way we read our Bible... We read it like just something that, uh, something that makes me. We have to be dutiful. More dutiful in reading the Bible than we read our university materials. More dutiful. You know? You read medicine, the kind of reading you read is no joke. You read law, the kind of reading you read is no joke. I mean, you read um, architecture, you read history, then it comes to the Bible. Some of you have been carrying your Bible since you were born. You have never read half of it. You on your own has never read a complete book of the Bible. And you are a believer. This is your Christianity, eh? <laughs> it's a serious one. The only book you have for your Christian experience and relationship with God, the only book you have that helps you to relate to the invisible world is the Bible. Yet, 
you don't lead it. And you want to live a victorious life. Or from where? Ignorance is a major disease. When you don't know what you have, you function like one who doesn't have it. Matthew 21 verse 16, look at what Jesus will say. And he said unto them, Hearest thou what this say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Have you never read Matthew 24, 42 Anaginosko Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord come. Next verse. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief will come, he will have watched and will not have suffered his house to be broken up. So, anaginosko means to read properly. He is saying, pay attention to details. Anytime he said, have you not read, those verses in question are among other verses. Have you not read where this was said? It was not only that that was said, but it was said in the midst of other things that were said. And that's why you must pay attention. It's like, didn't you take note of this in your reading? So, the kind of reading required in Bible study is to take note or to take notice. Look at Matthew twenty-two thirty-one. But as touching the resurrection of the dead... Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God saying, Have you not read, next verse, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. So it's important to read. Reading cannot be substituted for any other thing. You must read. The only way to read is to read. You must read through. Brother Philip encountered a certain man in Acts chapter 8. That man asked Philip a golden question. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Next verse. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. Next verse. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou... What thou redest. Next verse. And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that you will come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his sharer, so opened he not his mouth. Next verse. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some? That is intelligent reading. When you read intelligently, in the process of reading, questions begin to pop up. That is when you know you are reading. Not that you are reading and everything goes. No, you are not reading. You are glancing. When you are really reading, you become interrogative. That's why Jesus will say, you search the scriptures. The word search in the Greek is, you interrogate the scriptures. Interrogate, investigate the scriptures. For in them, you think you have eternal life. But they are they which testify of me. The man said, of whom speaketh the prophet Isaiah? Of himself or of some other man? Now that gave Philip an idea that this guy is really, really paying attention. Next verse. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. The same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Now this is the story of the utopian eunuch was returning on his chariot the style of reading was that they read very loud because philip had him reading they didn't read quiet that's how they read the bible in bible days they read very loud and they read out that means you read in a way where you yourself are hearing yourself that's how to read the bible properly and then he asked him do you understand what you're reading but the first thing is that the man was reading so he has met rule one he didn't say, understand it thou Greek and Hebrew. Greek and Hebrew is not your first line of learning Bible. 
Leave Greek and Hebrew for me for now. You read first. Don't let Greek and Hebrew defeat you. I'm not using Greek and Hebrew to intimidate you or to make you think I'm intelligent. Greek is somebody's language. Hebrew is somebody's language. The only reason why I have to use Greek and Hebrew is because English language is young and English language is progressing. When the Bible was interpreted from Greek and Hebrew to English, English was too young. So certain expressions in English deny you the privilege of understanding what the author intended to say. So with today's understanding of English, when I look at English Bible and I see certain things that do not add up, then I go to the Greek and the Hebrew to check what was said and I interpret it with today's understanding to bring you to a place where you can see clearly what the author intended. And that's the duty of a Bible teacher. So it's not for intimidation. It's to make myself more efficient in explaining the Bible to you. You know, have you not read? Just say, okay, it's simply to read. But when you look at the Greek, anaginosko, have you not read attentively? Didn't you pay attention when you were reading because if you were reading by paying attention you wouldn't ask the questions you're asking so that means it's not just casual reading okay is aggressive dedicated reading and that kind of bible study when you finish you don't say i am refreshed when you finish say i'm tired i study every day of my life i live my life studying what else am i here for I study the word of God because people require the word of God from my mouth. And I must be able to say it the way it is supposed to be said. I can decide to just preach nonsense. And you will be shouting amen. But when I appear before Jesus, I will face the music. So I've got to be honest in the way I teach you the word of God. So that even if you don't like me today because I have used my teaching to scatter what you knew. After five, ten years, when you grow up, you will come back to what I'm teaching. Because no matter how you run away from the truth, one day you will come back to it. That's why I'm not afraid of what I'm teaching. What I'm teaching you, I put it on global platform. Where theologians, Bible scholars, professors of the Bible have access to hear what I'm teaching. So that if what I'm teaching is not true, they can challenge me on it. I'm not hiding to teach it because what I'm teaching is the truth. Nothing but the truth. It may go against religion. It may go against the things you are taught traditionally in churches. But when the chips are down, what I'm teaching will stand the test of time. See? So I'm not ashamed of what I'm teaching. At all. Communion is not a practice. Some people don't like me for it. Their liking will not put food on my table. Bishop called me. He said, listening to you this evening on communion. Now I get it. You are very correct. Now I have seen it. See, before he didn't like me because he felt I was attacking communion. Now his eyes have opened to see that there is no communion in the New Testament. In fact, in the whole Bible, there's no communion. It's not anywhere. If you find it, show me. It's not anywhere. What we call communion today is a rebranded version of the Passover. The only thing you will see is Passover. And Passover was not bread and rabina or bread and coke. Passover was a feast of the Jews that was used to point to the coming of Jesus. When Jesus showed up, the Passover arrived. So we don't need that bread and rabbina because the real Passover is here. He's not only here, he lives on your inside. Well, I thought somebody would shout glory. Why will I be eating bread and drink when the real person I'm trying to eat is living inside me? 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, Christ our Passover. Purge out therefore the old living, that you may be a new lump as you are unliving. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So in the Old Testament, they ate bread and ribina to point to Christ. Since they didn't have Christ, they ate something that symbolized Christ to show that they have faith 
in Christ, even though he was not there. So every time they were eating that, they were doing it with Christ in mind. And somebody said to me, why is it that when Jesus came, he too, he ate with them? Because he was born under the law. So since he was still under the law to fulfill the law, he had to do what they did under the law. But the moment he died and rose, the law was taken out of the way. So today we don't observe the law because the reality lives on our inside. Christ in you. I thought somebody would shout glory. Somebody said to me somewhere, but I eat communion so that I can be healed. No, it's not communion that heals you. He sent his word and his word healeth them. The healer is God's word. It's not Ribena. When you eat Ribena and bread, when you go to the toilet, it's out. Yeah, it perishes by the using. The only thing that will not go out is the word of God. Because the word of God lives and abides forever. So Philip took his time and read the written word and engaged the law of corroboration. He must have given the man different scriptures to explain Christ. Remember the key is that the eunuch read. Obviously, the man did not read it casually. Those who read scriptures casually, it's very difficult to teach them. Because even their lives are casual. It's the responsibility of the pastor to ensure that every member of the church is reading. You must read the Bible. And I'm here to teach you nothing but the written word. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 27. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. You know, in Bible days, they didn't have a Bible. So he said, I charge you, take this epistle, read it, let everybody hear. Look at Colossians 4.16. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Lydosians. And that you likewise read the epistle from Lydosia. So they were sharing epistles. Letters were transferred from one church to another for the purpose of reading. For the purpose of reading. Why was it so? Because there was no printing press available. No printing press. That's why till tomorrow, listen carefully, on every available verse of the Bible, you have at least 5,000 manuscripts for every verse. Every verse of the Bible has over 5,000 manuscripts. Because the only way they could get it was to write it. Then when they write it, they read it. When they read it, they transfer it. So everybody was writing. So the ancient manuscripts of the Bible, each verse had at least 5,000 manuscripts of the same. If you get to the archives or the library of how the Bible was written. See, that's no joke at all because they didn't have printing press. So they had to write with their hands, you know. Now, how can you grow when you are very lazy to write scriptures? You come to church with writing materials. Because a lot will be taught and your head can carry all. So you need to write. Why are you writing? So you can read. Why are you read, reading? Because you wrote. Some say, but I'll get the CD. That's a lazy approach to Bible study. There is something writing notes does to your understanding. There's something writing notes does to your understanding. Even if you write the note three times, it grows your understanding. Sometimes when I write notes, I rewrite them and I recopy it. And in the process of recopying the notes that I will teach you from, it registers. Yes, so I can come here and teach without looking at my notes because I have copied and copied and copied carefully and it has registered in my mind. It's learning. Learning is tedious. Learning is a discipline. It's a discipline. That's why lazy people can go to school. Only diligent people can go to school. Lazy people drop out. Lazy people can start school and not graduate. But it takes diligence. There's a quality of discipline required to read through and pass. The same thing with the word of God. There are many things that would discourage you. But because you are persuaded and you are determined, you overlook them to graduate. Same thing with Bible study. 
Same thing with the Bible study. It requires discipline. And just like you study, I also study. So the same discipline you're having, I'm having even more. Because I, I study more. I excavate. If you see my study, it's like a construction site. It's excavation all over. Books are scattered everywhere. Opened in certain ways. And my house members are warned not to touch any book. Even if they open it and drop it on the floor like this. Leave it there. If you will sweep, sweep around it and go. Don't touch. Because you don't know why it is spread like that. Excavation is still in progress. <laughs> it's a construction site. <laughs> ah, my bed. Mama says your bed is a junkyard. My bed, you see books on top of my bed. Books, biro. Some books are folded. Some you see a long line. Some notes scattered. Oh, I sleep with them. I wake up with them. That's the only way I can feed you like this. It's a lot of discipline. And I'm glad to do it. Because it's blessing you. The joy of my study is to see you blessed. To see you grow. And to see you teaching the word the way I'm teaching it. <laughs> yeah. When I see my spiritual sons and daughters excavating scripture and teaching people the same. Quoting Greek, Hebrew all over the place. And explaining exegesis. Making scripture interpret scripture. I shake my head and say, that's right. It was worth the study. And I have them all over the place. From this house everywhere. Sons and daughters. Who I'm building doctrinally. To teach the same. The things you have heard of me. Among many witnesses. The same. Can be to faithful men. That's what life is all about. So anaginosko is to pay attention to details. First Thessalonians 5.27 where we read, you see that all believers must be commanded to read. Read. I'd like you to turn to your neighbor and say, read the scriptures. I didn't hear you. Can I hear you louder? Can I hear a powerful amen? Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Many people have used that scripture for prayer. That scripture is not for prayer. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. When we read the pretext and the post-text and we did some word study, we discovered that the word pray is the word wish. We should wish for as we ought. We discovered that it is not the spirit that groans, rather it is we that are groaning to put on our resurrected bodies it is we groaning in our mortality so we can wear immortality and i did some corroboration so it's not a prayer but a reinforcing of the deposit of the spirit as a guarantee for the resurrection of the body it's a response to the groaning of the body and a proof to the intercessory work of christ all right now remember you cannot get the result of God by misinterpreting the Bible. You can never get the result of God by misinterpreting the Bible. That's very clear. You can know Jesus, and if you know Jesus clearly, he was very particular about what the scriptures taught. That's why he kept saying, have you not read? He never allowed people to misinterpret scriptures. If you look at the teachings of Jesus, every time he taught, beginning at Moses, and he always went through the scriptures. That was Jesus' pattern of teaching. He always went through. Always. That's why you have people like Peter who say, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. When we saw him on the holy mountain, he appeared to us, we heard his voice. Then Peter would say, but we have also a more sure word. Beyond our visions and dreams, the word of God is superior. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Wherefore, you do well that you take heed unto that word. So it's important for you to take note of that. A truth cannot be found in a lie. What has been working 
it's not that verse. Somebody say, but I've been using that verse, Romans 8, 26, to pray and it has been working. A truth cannot be found in a lie. That verse is not a verse for prayer. The fact that you use it to pray and it work, is not that verse that is working. It's something else that is working. Because a truth cannot be found in a lie. When a scripture is misinterpreted, that is a lie communicated. Because the scriptures can never mean today what it didn't mean when it was first written. There is consistency in the truth of the scriptures. Because it is a divine message. And a divine message is consistent. Now can there be groanings in prayer? We will find out in the process. And that's the beauty of contextual study. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto unto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. So now we have double emphasis in praying and we have double emphasis in supplication. Praying always with all prayer. Double emphasis. Supplication, supplication. So two words have double emphasis. Prayer and supplication. So your mind should be on praying, prayer, and supplication. When you see emphasis, that is something to pay attention to. And we have double emphasis on prayer and supplication. So let's examine supplication. Supplication is the word disease in the Greek. D-E-E-S-I-S. -S. It means heart petition that concerns you. It means bringing a request that involves you. It could be about others, but it involves you. Bringing a request or a heartfelt petition. A petition that affects your heart. Something you feel strong in your heart. This is. You can read these scriptures when you get home. Luke 1 13, Luke 2 37, Luke 5 33. Give me Romans chapter 10, verse 1. We're dealing with supplication. This is. Brethren, my heart's desire, heartfelt desire, my heart's desire. And prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. My heart's desire and prayer. So supplication is strong heart felt. A strong heart felt desire. That's what supplication is. A strong heart felt desire. You can read the following scriptures at home. And you will have more of that scripture on supplication. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 14. Philippians chapter 1 verse 4. Philippians chapter 1 verse 19. Philippians chapter 1 verse 4. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy always in every prayer philippians chapter 4 verse number 6 be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god supplication First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. You can read this following at home. First Timothy 5 5. Second Timothy 1 3. Hebrews 5 7. Hebrews Five, seven. Talking about Jesus. Look at First Peter chapter three, verse twelve. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open unto their prayers. 
But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Over the righteous means supplication, to supplicate. So when you find the word disease, it is used to beckon on authority. To beckon on authority. That means you are supplicating something. That is, you are asking something of God. Or you are asking of the situation of the from the king. You are asking concerning a situation. It was used in Bible days either to request of the king to do something. To request of the king to do something. To give a strong request or proposal to the king so that he can act. That's where you have the word disease from. In Ephesians 6.18 praying always with all prayer. That word always means every time. For all saints, all believers are to be prayed for this way. Praying always and supplication in the spirit and watching. I'd like you to underline the word watching. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching. And watching. Let's see that word watching. Mark 13, 33. Watch and pray. For you know not when the time is. In this prayer, there is a watching. And by the way, this series I'm teaching is a continuation of my teaching on the meat called unanswered prayer. I did a, a 30 hour teaching on that some time back. This is a continuation of that teaching. Okay. So there is watching in this kind of prayer. There's a watching in this supplication. You watch. You observe. You look intently when praying this prayer. Okay. Luke 21 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So there's a watching. In Hebrews 13 17, he said, You should obey them that have the rule over you, for they watch over your soul. Those, the same word for watch. So that means in this prayer, there's a watching. That is, we pray and observe. We don't just pray. We pray and observe. With all perseverance. We pray, we watch with all perseverance. To persevere and supplicate for all sins. That word to persevere is the word proskateresis in the Greek. It's P-R-O, pro, P-R-O, skateresis is S-K-A-R-T-E-R-E-S-I-S. Why does he use that word here, the word watching? Proskateresis. He is talking about committed prayer. Committed. Watching which will drive home the commitment watching you are praying and watching the watching is what drives home the commitment and so you get this word proskateresis from proskaterio proskaterio in the greek p-r-o-s-k-a-t-e-r-e-o proskaterio which can be used for a few things for example, Romans 12, 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. So it is used for prayer. The word perseverance. Perseverance means to continue. In this kind of prayer, you pray, you watch with a continuity attitude. With an attitude of continuation. When it is used, it is used with the intent to prevail. This kind of prayer is a prayer you are praying to prevail. 
you are not praying to give up you are committed to the prayer that the prayer will not stop until the result is on ground this is it's a prayer with a commitment and the intent is to prevail that's the nature of supplication in supplication you continue supplication is a prayer you don't stop until the result arrives you are praying for a family to have a fruit of the womb you stay on that prayer you keep speaking the fruit of the womb into that marriage until the miracle happens this is you are praying for a young woman to get married you stay on that prayer it's not a prayer of receive your husband amen receive your husband amen finish no no because what that prayer will have to do is to galvanize circumstances arrange situations and locate a young man that is ready to marry and is in search of a woman and then carry that young man the prayer will carry the young man and move him through circumstances and situations and as you stay in that prayer it will keep moving the young man will not know why things are working like this for him until he will arrive where you are it's not uh, take it receive no there is receive oh, for a different thing in supplication you pray until because the intent of the prayer is to prevail it's prayer that changes things prayer that you stay on until the desired result comes so you can see that lazy people can't pray this kind of prayer because it is a committed request this is is the prayer of supplication continuing instant in prayer so we are watching to prevail we are on the alert to prevail you are praying and you are watching and you stay there because while you are praying and watching the holy ghost through your prayer will start giving you direction there are times you may need to travel to a certain location there are times you may have to take certain decisions there are times you may need to change some approach it is in the midst of the prayer as you are watching you will see the signals of the spirit that will help you to navigate to where the answer is either waiting or will position you where the answer will find you it's a prayer of supplication it's a prayer of commitment you stay in it you don't quit you don't surrender continuing instant in prayer in colossians chapter 4 verse 2 continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving this kind of prayer always has watching attached continue in the same with thanksgiving we must attend to it and continue so it's making us know that getting result in prayer is based on our commitment to it based on our commitment to it getting results in prayer is based on our commitment to it all right it is also used for waiting upon something watch means to wait upon something mark 3 9 and he spoke to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him should wait on him because of the multitude lest they should throng him to wait on him to be available for him acts chapter 1 verse 14 see what happened when they were waiting for the holy ghost this all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and mary the mother of jesus and with his brethren do you know why they particularly mention mary to show you that mary the mother of jesus received jesus as her savior and to show you that mary obeyed jesus went to jerusalem and stayed with them in prayer meaning on the day of pentecost mary was inside the room when they spoke in tongues mary also spoke in tongues she didn't say am i not the mother of god i am the one to be praying for you no no mary humbled herself joined the people to pray and entered the place on the day of pentecost and waited for the holy ghost and mary spoke in tongues and prophesied mary spoke in tongues and prophesied that's why you don't ask mary to pray for you you and mary are the same before god 
The same way she received Christ, you receive Christ. The same way she received the Holy Ghost, you receive the Holy Ghost. So I say, but is she not the one that gave birth to Jesus? Yeah, she is the one that gave birth to Jesus. If she had said no, Jesus would have looked for another person. Jesus stayed inside her for nine months. He stays in you forever. He lives in you forever. We thank God for her. But that's the end of it. I won't begin to ask Mary to pray for me. For what now? For what? Don't I have mouth? I have mouth. Me too, I can pray. The Bible says we all pray. How many of us pray? Everybody ought to be praying. Don't be a prayer collector. You learn how to pray. It's so important because if you can't pray for yourself, if you depend on people's prayer, this life will show you. Because people too, they can pray for you for some time, but they too have their own challenges to face. So after they pray some more for you, they concentrate on their own. So if you're not praying for yourself, you're in trouble. That's why when Jesus took his disciples, he said, gentlemen, my soul is sorrowful. Come, let's go and pray. When they got to the place of prayer, he said, you guys stay here. He took three. He said, you guys, I trust you more than the others. Pray well. Oh. Then he went further and prayed for himself. He didn't rely on their prayer. He prayed for himself because friends, if your life is dependent on people's prayer, you will live a life of sorrow. You must learn to pray by yourself. You have to learn to pray. Jesus prayed. After some time, he stood up to come and check these people that are supposed to be praying for him. They were snoring. Uh -uh. They were snoring. He woke them up. Can't you watch for one hour? Watch and pray. That you fall out into temptation. Pray. He went back. You have to learn to pray. I remember when I started ministry newly. Some guys because they had money. They will be bringing us to their house to pray for them while they sleep. I did that kind of ministry. Oh, because me too I wanted the money. So that I can do ministry that time. So we will come to this big big man's house. Then they will give us their prayer request on paper around 11 o'clock. Then they will enter bedroom and sleep. Then we will pray till morning. Then they will come out in the morning and say, the prayers were very powerful. I was hearing it while I was sleeping. You guys are really powerful. Okay, take 100,000. You take 50,000. God bless you. Come back next week. Oh. After I prayed that prayer for a few weeks, I said, God forbid. God forbid that I be praying for money. Instead, let me not pray. Instead, let me be hungry. Why will I be praying for a man to pay me? What for? How much can he pay for prayer? You know what prayer is? It's in one of those prayers that we're praying with somebody. He started praying and said, oh, oh, oh. Before I know it, he started coughing blood. I said, stop. He said, no, it's the spirit. I said, no, this is not the spirit. You need medical attention. You are coughing blood. There's no scripture that says you should pray and cough blood. Once blood starts coming out, you are a medical case. I told him, stop. The prayer is over. This was around 2 o'clock. He said, the man will say we didn't pray well. I said, you want to die? <laughs> Prayer has finished. God has answered. If the man comes now, we will tell him God has answered. Stop coughing. Settle down. I got him some water to drink. We sat down and calmed down. The man woke up in the morning. He said, the prayer has finished early. I said, because God answered very fast. Give us our money. <laughs> we will be praying for you. You pray for yourself now. <laughs> Can't you pray? That guy is a victim of bad pastoring. When a man is well pastored, he learns to pray. You learn to pray. We pray. We pray for one another. But we also pray for ourselves. So in prayer, we watch. We continue. We watch. We continue. We are instant. Acts 10, 7. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him how? Continually. So it brings in a commitment in prayer. So praying in the spirit as much as it involves tongues has to do with steadfastness. Steadfastness. There's a steadfastness to it. And there's a continuity to it. That's why he says, always for all saints. Then he said, in the spirit. So even though it's in the spirit, 
It requires an attitude of steadfastness. You pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and watch and watch and pray until you see it happen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We watch to prevail. We wait to prevail. And let me tell you, if you really want to live a victorious life on earth, you cannot do without prayer. Prayer is a necessity in your adventure with God on earth. Prayer. Prayer is so vital for the believer because prayer is what keeps your communication with the invisible. Prayer is your medium of fellowship with the immortal. Prayer is your medium of exercising your authority on the earth. So when you start praying, Yamana, Jaco Natabaya, you start exercising authority. Prayer is that medium where your authority, because you rule with words. So when you start praying, you start releasing your influence over nature, over things. Circumstances begin to bow. Situations begin to comply. Impossibilities begin to become possible. Where they say it cannot work, it starts working. Because prayer will enter there and shift things and rearrange things and create space for you to enter. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man make a tremendous power available that is dynamic in his workings. Sabalagada. Sabalagada. As you stand on your feet and get ready to shout the loudest amen in this building, your best days are ahead. Your best days are ahead. Your best days are ahead. Your brightest days are ahead. Ah, the path of the righteous is as the shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I speak unto you today as your amen is coming like thunder. Every day of your future will be better than the past. Hey, Shakota Laba, Nebro da Sekele de Baba. Wherever you are found, circumstances will obey you. Situations will bow to you. Hey, a game no where you need a miracle in this service. As your amen is coming like thunder, I command tumors in your body to melt out right now. Growth disappear right now. Disease be healed. Heart disease be corrected. Asthma out. High blood pressure cease. Body be healed. Be healed. Be healed. From your head to the soles of your foot. Agama Lobato Maraca. Where you need a new part in your body. Where you need a creative miracle. As your amen is coming like thunder. Receive creative miracles. Receive creative miracles. Receive creative miracles. Receive creative miracles. I command hearing conditions corrected. I command your eye conditions corrected. Satan, get your hands off. In the name of Jesus. Receive miracles. Receive favors. Receive miracles. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that your word never comes back void. I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. I thank you, Lord, that you confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And I thank you, Lord, that your word is magnified among us. So I decree and I declare that in the name of Jesus, right where you are standing, manifestation of miracles. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. Great grace is upon you. The eyes of your understanding is being enlightened. You are built up, you are established, you are grounded in the truth of Jesus.